our God, there is one. God is to understand the basic principle of spiritual living. One power means what it says, one power. And it leaves no room for any other powers over which that one power is to be exercised, to be used or applied. God never can be used, and yet God is power. In fact, God is not only power, but the only power in the spiritual universe. I will, I will just intervene for the benefit of uh, people who have missed the third session. Because this is such a book, it doesn't work out with the mess. Um, so, you see, there is no hierarchy of powers. It is easier said than done because we're all taken over by hierarchical mindset. It's a big power, small power. We have so many moral codes ruling our lives. This is right, that is wrong. And all these are hierarchical, comparative uh, structures which have taken over the humanity, uh, dissipating them, squandering them, fragmenting them completely, and we are where we are, the rootless, uprooted, and just floating over, floating over the ground. We are not grounded, not centered. So. The most beautiful thing that I submit that let us be grounded with one power. One power. Now, I'm shouting only because this needs a push to throw it out of the window. There are not many powers. There is only one power. And that power is in the medicine. That power is with the doctors. I got a doctor friend, in a very, very great friend, and he has been a pediatrician when he joined Danan Medical College, and he became the medical superintendent. He took my course in 95. Now he happens to be the vice chancellor in the Guru Nanak University Medical College somewhere in Amritsar. A great man. <laughs> there is a hexed company who is to distribute a poster for the doctors it is to be written i many people have seen i treat he cures now what the jits uh, what the jit singh had done he removed that poster and he created his own poster and kept it on the door and i cannot forget that uh, you know what he wrote he treats he cures <laughs> you see he changed it. I treat he cures was a separation. He treats he cures actually defines the one power. On this backdrop, let's quickly go over to chapter four. Get to welcome today. Longing to hear your voice next time after COVID. Thank you, Ashish. This is a long chapter. Chapter four. Uh, Good morning and welcome once again on 2nd of July to another session of Oyster. We begin with our readings from the Law of Spiritual Healing. Chapter 4, The Language of Spiritual Healing. Not long ago, I talked with an Orthodox minister who had finished reading my book, Practicing the Peasants. He had enjoyed it very much, found it challenging. But he added that the language and some of the terms used were new to him. Certainly it is true that, to the reader untutored in mysticism, some terms are incomprehensible. But it must be remembered that mysticism, like any other field of study, has its own specialized terminology. Spiritual healing as taught in the infinite way is built around a few words. Before we go on to consider these words, let me explain briefly what infinite way is. It is a spiritual teaching cons consisting of principles which anyone may follow and practice, irrespective of his religious affiliation. The infinite way reveals the nature of God to be one infinite power, intelligence and love. 
the nature of individual being to be one with his qualities and character expressed in infinite forms and variety and the nature of the discords of this world to be a misconception of God's expression of himself in his universe. There are universal principles based on the message of the Master, Christ Jesus, who taught that man can realize his oneness with God through conscious communion with God, thereby bringing about peace on earth, harmony and wholeness. Allow me to read this para again, please, for better understanding of all. Spiritual healing as taught in the infinite way is built around a few words. Before we go on to consider these words, let me explain briefly what infinite way is. It is a spiritual teaching consisting of principles which anyone may follow and practice irrespective of his religious affiliation. The infinite way reveals the nature of God to be one infinite power, intelligence and love. The nature of individual being to be one with his qualities and character expressed in infinite forms and variety and the nature of the discords of this world to be a misconception of God's expression of himself in his universe. These are universal principles based on the message of the Master, Christ Jesus, who taught that man can realize his oneness with God through conscious communion with God thereby bringing about peace on earth, harmony and wholeness. In this new language of spiritual healing, the first and most important word that must be understood is the word, little word, as. An understanding of which eliminates forever all sense of duality. God is manifest as individual being. If God is manifest as individual being, there is not God in man. There is not God in you. Therefore, there cannot be a person going to God for something. During the years when I was devoting my time exclusively to healing work, as patients came to me, I learned not to look, not to see them as human beings, nor to look to God to patch them up. I saw that everyone who came to me was God appearing as individual being. And that truth revealed harmony. That truth revealed the divinity of their being and body. And the revelation was the foundation stone of the infinite way. Incidentally, the infinite way happens to be a bestseller of this author. That book has been sold much more than the one that we are reading. I came to know of this much later because I straight away went into it recommended by Eckhart. But I later found that uh, he first wrote in finite way and was a bestseller. Go ahead, Karst. There is only God manifesting its infinite spiritual nature as your being. I and my father are one, not two. In that oneness, all that God is, you are. When you understand as the God appearing as individual you and me, you will understand why all that God is, you are. Son, thou art ever with me and all that I have is thine. I am joint heir with Christ to all heavenly riches. I can of mine own Self to nothing. But because of my oneness with Father, all that God is, I am. Wherever I am, the Father within me is. Therefore, wherever I am, the Father within me is about His business. God appearing as individual being, God appearing as you is a secret of the infinite way. It is a secret of spiritual healing. This you is not a reflection or separate idea or something less than a God, but God itself made manifest God, the Father, appearing on earth 
as individual beings. Oneness is the secret. After you have assimilated this truth by living with it, by practicing it, by looking out at every man, woman and child, every animal, vegetable and mineral in the world and realizing this is not what it seems to be. This is God appearing as. You develop that healing consciousness which never looks at people and judges them by their humanhood, but which is immediately in contact with the spiritual consciousness. You train yourself to see people, not as they look, but to see through their eyes, back of their eyes, realizing that there sits the Christ of God. As you do that, you learn to ignore appearances and instead of trying to heal or reform someone or improve him, you are really bearing witness to his Christ identity. Once again, you should relate this... Uh... Christ of God. You know what does nomen that nomenclature means in our understanding? The soul of human. Christ is the soul of human. It is not the name of Jesus. When Jesus became self-realized, he was called Jesus Christ. Jesus was the man. He was Christened. Very interesting, please note carefully. It is we who created the religion. Nowhere Jesus Christ met Christians. It is humans that met Christians. Krishna never promoted Hindus. It is humans that met Hindus. Jesus spoke, spoke about father and son. Okay, That was the nomenclature he gave for the understanding of the common man. And he never proclaimed to be the father. The most beautiful thing in Bible is Jesus never called him father. Nobody calls him father. He has presented him as an elder brother. Very beautiful elder brother who has come with the knowledge of the father to distribute that knowledge to his younger brother. So they have that culture. So Christ of God is the soul and the soul is the part of the spirit. Paramatma and Atma in the Indian meaning. Christ of God is the Atma. And the God being told here in the book is Paramatma. Of which Atma is a reflection of the Father. Just like the sunlight falling here on this balcony I got a sunlight is there <laughs> the sunlight and the sun is same let's go ahead just like uh, Jesus Christ you can also say Gautam of Buddha Gautam Buddha yeah. the man is Gautam Take... and he became Buddha and he became Buddha Second and equal in importance to the word as is the word is. If it is true that God manifests as individual being, then harmony already in the truth is the truth about every person. And so the great word in prayer and treatment is, is. You are never trying to heal anyone. You are never trying to reform or enrich anyone. You live always in the realization of is. Since it, God is your being, harmony is. Since all that Father has is yours, you are now in the fullness and completeness of God. Since God is the activity of your being, harmony is the law of your being. By never dwelling in the past or future, you live in the consciousness of is. Which is why Eckhart recommended this book. Even though you see a sick person, a, yes, sorry. Kapil, isko mark kariye. You are never trying to heal anyone. Se lekar ke harmony is the. This book quotation share kar dijiye. Aage chalte. 
even though you see a sick person a drunken person or a dying one you ignore the ignore the appearance and declare is because of as is must be do you see that if god is appearing as you then harmony is the truth about you the more powerful word the most powerful word in the vocabulary of prayer is is the verb is harmony is god is joy is peace is abundance is omnipresence is in the presence of omnipresence is there anything to be healed changed reformed overcome or destroyed neither tak maaf karo the most powerful se leke ye bhi bada power hai chote chote words se isko padhne se pura kitab clear ho jata hai kai baar padhni padti hai usse bhi usko maaf kiya jata hai you look at every appearance but do not permit yourself to become disturbed by any one of them your eyes may bear witness to somebody's illness poverty or sinfulness but spirit tells you no this is god made manifest this is the very incarnation of god therefore harmony is true regardless of what my eyes see or my ears hear spiritual healing demands a developed consciousness it is a consciousness that is able to see through the appearance and inner vision that appears you of this truth that assures you of this truth even when the senses testify to a thief or dying person nobody can be a successful spiritual healer except the person who has that inner assurance this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased it matters not what the outer senses may testify something within has to sing a song and the song it must sing is this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased i in the midst of you am mighty words will not do that it has to be an inner conviction and that is only attained through practice through realization and finally through grace of god which comes to you in your inner self when you can sit beside a new a very sick person with no trace of fear because something inside you is singing this is my beloved son i in the midst of you am mighty i will never leave you or forsake you then you are a spiritual healer that takes development brought about by practice until the day comes when his this voice speaks to you from within otherwise this consciousness is received through the grace of god as a gift so healing according to joel goldsmith the author is not a profession you cannot brand yourself it is a practice it is a service and it is a culture that you pick up it begins there it ends there in the process many people are healed do not isolate yourself as a healer Look, I am a healer, and he is not a healer. No, healing is a culture. We are all entitled to be healer, and that's the most beautiful thing in this world. So, with a professional ambition, don't read the book. Read the book to be an evolved spiritual master, an enlightened person, a person of wisdom. Go ahead. It is difficult to achieve this conviction. However, until certain other facets related to spiritual healing are clarified, one of the most important of these is the function of the mind. In the early days of metaphysical healing, it was taught that body is subject to the mind. This was such a novel idea, so new and challenging, 
that modern man began to practice of using his mind to control his body. For a short time, he found that it worked, and sometimes it still works with beginners. The fallacy is in this technique. However, is that it leaves out of consideration the fact that behind thought there must be a thinker, and that the thinker is not a person, the thinker is God, the soul of the man. Kapil, you stop here. And I would request Kitu to take over, and you may come back if she's tired, because there's a long time. Yeah. Uh, Kitu, start from this uh, paragraph in the early days, because this is profound and not so easy to understand. <clears throat> in the early days of metaphysical healing, it was taught that the body is subject to the mind. This was such a novel idea so new and challenging that modern man began the practice of using his mind to control his body. For a short time, he found that it worked and sometimes it still works with beginners. The fallacy in this technique, however, is that it leaves out of consideration the fact that behind thought there must be a thinker and that the thinker is not a person. The thinker is God, the soul of man. The mind is an instrument of awareness. You can know the truth with the mind, but you do not create things with the mind. Even an inventor does not create with the mind. He becomes aware of certain natural laws which have always existed and learns how to bring them together and utilize them. The right use of the mind as an instrument of awareness makes it not only a powerful instrument, but one that increases in its capacity the more it is used, continuously unfolding new potentialities. Once it is understood that the mind is an instrument, it must also be understood of what it is the instrument. Because to be an instrument, there must be something governing and controlling the instrument. Unfortunately, most people have never found the center within, which can effectively control the mind. In mental science, students who try to control the mind by willpower or by changing their thoughts usually discover that the mind cannot be controlled by man and often end up in a worse condition than when they started making nervous wrecks themselves. This is very profound, so Kapil kindly covered this, unfortunately so. Once it is understood that the mind is an instrument, it must, it must also be understood of what it is the instrument. Because to be an instrument, there must be something governing and controlling the instrument. Unfortunately, most people have never found the center within, which can effectively control the mind. In mental science, students who try to control the mind by willpower or by changing their thoughts usually discover that the mind cannot be controlled by man and often end up in a worse condition than when they started making nervous wrecks of themselves. One second, Kittu. Now think of the mobile phone, which is a device. We are mad about buying mobiles. Is it the mobile? Or is it the SIM card? Or the network? Or the energy that flows through that makes it? So of what it is an instrument? If it is an instrument, if it is a device of what it is a device. It is energy. Energy branded as Airtel, Vodafone, BSNL, other religions. These are the names of the religion. It is the same energy branded by a company, Geo. Right? So it is the energy which is the core of the instrument that moves it. 
Now you cannot ignore the energy and keep on buying the best mobile phone paying lakhs of rupees. They are important because they're their device and they can function. They can move around. But it is the energy. God happens to be the energy that moves through the instruments and devices called humans. And God is the healer. It is that energy that is reaching out to you, not Oshik, or not Joel, or not Eckhart Tolle, or not Kitu or Kapil. Go ahead. The mind is an instrument for something higher than itself. That something is your self, your true identity. And when it governs the mind and controls it, you will find yourself at peace, perfect peace. A peace that passeth understanding. You will have a correct picture and a good example of the proper use of the mind. If you can recall some photographs, you may have seen of Thomas A. Edison. Almost always Edison is pictured with his hand up to his ear in an attitude of intense listening. Those who worked with him in the laboratory have recounted story after story of how he would give them an experiment to work on, which they would carry out as far as they could, and then they would call upon him for assistance. Immediately, Edison's hand would go up to his ear. He would listen and then give directions as to the next step. Let me point out the difference between attempting to use the mind as a creative faculty and using the mind as an instrument of awareness. If I were operating on the level of mind or thought, I would close my eyes and affirm over and over again. Your body is well. Your body functions normally. Your body responds to this truth that I am knowing. And in all probability, there would be some healing and some benefit derived from such practice. As a matter of fact, in the early days of metaphysics, there were remarkable healings. Actually, however, it was never the full, full truth that the mind of one person could control the body, either of himself or of another person. It was one of those on the way to getting there places. It was a stopping place, a higher level than believing that the body in and of itself contains the issues of life. Take a second. Is uh, Mona Lisa here? Uh, Aditi is here today? No, I don't think so, Ajit. Okay. It is a paragraph which is for her because she and I often and we are very fond of each other, but we have a little war on her. She aspires to be a psychologist and I don't want her to be one. And this is a paragraph which I should give it to her. It is not the mind. It is something over the mind that can heal. The mind cannot heal. The other day, she said, oh, she thinks, which world you are? Psychology has gone very far, very, very far. However far you go, you are taking your inter interpretation farther. Not the truth farther. The truth cannot be taken farther. Here in this book, we are talking about the truth. Go ahead, Kitu. From the standpoint of spiritual healing and spiritual living in which God is understood as a soul, the law, and the life unto all being, and in which the mind is an instrument and the body the outer manifestation, the procedure is entirely different. If you are operating from that basis, when someone asks for help, you will close your eyes and you will think no thoughts. You will take no thought for what he shall eat or what he shall drink or what his health shall be. You will merely sit there knowing that your mind is an avenue of receptivity. Receptive to what? Receptive to the still small voice, to that which is called God, that which is the soul of man. You will make no declarations, but you will maintain a listening attitude and then the still small voice will utter itself 
and the earth will melt. In the silence, in which you have become almost a vacuum, a listening vacuum, always attentive, never sleepy, never tired, never lagging, but always awake, alert, waiting for the visitation of the Christ, out of that silence, out of the infinity which is God, out of the depths of the soul, comes either a voice, a feeling, a stirring, a release, or an assurance. Call it any name you wish, and the error is dissolved and disappears. It will make no difference whether the problem is physical, mental, moral, financial, or whether it is one of, the, one of relationships. Because it is not your wisdom that is undertaking the work. You are not drawing now. You are not drawing on what you have learned in your years of life on earth. You are holding yourself completely receptive to that which created you in the beginning and which knows the destiny of every person. And when you let it voice itself, you will be back where you belong which is under the jurisdiction of your heavenly father, under the government of that, he who knoweth your need before you do. He whose good pleasure it is to give you the kingdom. Let the mind be an instrument of awareness and instead of trying to break your head against an apparently insoluble problem, worrying about what the next step should be or what you are to do tomorrow or the next day, Form the habit of listening with your mind, using it as an instrument of awareness. Let read, God fill your mind. Read the sentence again. Uh, let read. the mind be an... No, it's a long sentence. Please. Let the mind be an instrument of awareness. And instead of trying to break your head against an apparently insoluble problem... Worrying about what the next step should be or what you are to do tomorrow or the next day, form the habit of listening with your mind, using it as an instrument of awareness. This is, this Let is, God fill your mind. This is very powerful. Kapil, so, Kitu, you have been always talking of awareness. This is for you. Okay? This is supreme. So he says, uh, awareness is supreme, right? Don't be toggled by the mind here and there. Go ahead. Let God fill your mind. Be a witness to the spirit, motivating, animating, and permeating both the mind and body. Be a witness to make it. Make of the mind and of the body instruments of God. Through the mind, become aware of the truth of God. And that truth will do the work. Not your mind and not your thoughts. It is not the activity of your mind that frees anybody. It is the activity of truth in your mind that frees him. Okay. You may we'll, have... We'll stop here for a while. Let's have some reflections because this is pretty heavy. And there are a lot of uh, uh, qualified, uh, competent experts here. So I think it is very important to have a reflection. What is happening? The, the mind and the thought is completely. बहुत छोटा कर दिया गया है इसको इंस्ट्रूमेंट बना दिया गया और हम कितना माइंड के वश हैं तो आपने हमने हमने क्या जाना क्या हमारी इंस्पिरेशन हुई हम इसको किस तरह से जीवन के साथ रिलेट कर रहे हैं गहरा सांस लीजिए दो तीन बार और रिफ्लेक्ट करिए ना एंड देन वील गो फादर relate and reflect.
और शायद अवेयरनेस का मतलब ये है कि सपोज आई एम इन सम सिचुएशन एंड आई एम अवेयर आई एम आई एम नॉट थिंकिंग विद माइंड बट आई एम लेटिंग माई सेल्फ डिजोल्व इन टू द सिचुएशन और मे बी मे बी यू नो आई आई वुड लाइक टू आई लाइक टू बेटर पुट इट लाइक आई आई लुक फ्रॉम अबाव ऑन द सिचुएशन and then my heart knows what what is what is the right way to respond uh you know leaving the ego aside and and then i respond in that way do you think uh, you know is that is that the definition of awareness so or is it something beyond i don't think anything i only say that there is a trap here ke to most of us have, have fallen to the trap awareness doesn't mean from awareness is just ease mm. moment you get from and to yeah i am i am looking at looking from the above now that's an interpretation there is nothing above so mm. awareness is about nothingness kindly kindly reflect on this it is not being aware of something it is being aware of nothing no thing mm. and it is not looking at looking down from the top it is just looking mm. and then flowing it is not right or wrong you use these words then i'll be able to say what is right <laughs> moment you say what is right you are eliminating what is wrong so mm. we are not here then we are not grounded okay being grounded means is just being aware can you relate with this it too being yeah. aware of nothing nothing particular just being aware is it synonymous with love maybe Yeah. So someone asked, "Ekhat Tole is love a portal?" So no, love is not a portal. How love can be a portal? Love is. So when I say I love you, I make it very small, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I ocean you. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot say things like that, can you? Mm-hmm. This is so vast. incomprehensible all encompassing omnipresent omniscient everywhere flowing around be aware with that and just flow yeah thanks for asking that question let's go thank forward thank you again ashit when you're looking at uh, the mind and be, the controlling of the mind, i mean uh, when you talked about psychology over here ultimately it has its own limitations because psychology is also talking about basically the psych or the, just the mind correct that's and, the fight uh, that's the fight i have with anything yeah. it's not the all in all it's uh, there is something governing the mind also where does the thought come from maybe one day i'll fight with my doctor <laughs> there is a cold, <laughs> there is a cold war going on already yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's how is here in silently listening that's <laughs> a main aapka sunna chahta hu isme aapka view kya hai please uh sir so, um, my experience of awareness not what i have read was that uh, at at one level i am and can be aware of the gross my body its sensations and uh, the shifting of the uh sensations and the attachment and the changing of the thoughts with the body and the breath and uh when i sit silently i can go into the awareness of my thoughts the content of my thoughts the origin of my thoughts and the whole process of my thoughts of origin and dissipating and changing into the other thought what uh, buddha the buddha always said the theory of uh, shan bhangurta and every 
moment one thing changes into another like one atom is changing into another one thought is changing into another, another and um, there is an awareness of that there can be an awareness of that but then i see that i am aware of these things and i am aware that i am aware of these things mm-hmm. so maybe a part of mind is watching the other part of mind that is thinking a mind by mind i don't mean the brain located in the head but mind means the consciousness all over the body so a part of mind is can be aware of the other part of mind that is the thought process and then there is an awareness that is uh, aware of being aware when we sit in meditation but beyond that there is silence there is nothingness there is no awareness even the awareness goes so there i cannot think i cannot judge i cannot know i am at i don't know space but as uh, manmeet ji just said is it love so what i see is after this practice what remains is a sense of peaceful love inside and there is no insecurities there is no need to do anything there is a there is a peaceful stability and uh, there is love as love not for anything not because of anything not conditions applied as i i always joke in my workshops ki i love you asterisk niche aata hai asterisk conditions applied <laughs> so uh, it is a love with an uh, without for for no reason it's just love so i think awareness can take us to these different levels of graduations but as you said ki being aware is the most rare thing people spend their lives and uh, end without just being with the idea of being aware and then comes awareness that is my experience that's a when these that experience happens that esteemed and the sublime experience that you are talking awareness of being aware when that happens how things change do lives change do professions change do tracks change the direction change what are the changes that come you think you feel i i relate to what laozu says uh, without doing anything all things are being done wow experience now uh, there is a beautiful hindi word which is repeatedly coming in my mind now as you were talking is avalamban have you heard this what is the meaning of this word avalamban um yes sir i have heard but please elaborate in in this relationship jaise andha hota hai na uske haath mein avalamban kya hota hai wo lathi hoti hai jisko oh, pakad ke wo jata hai hmm जीवन में हम सबको अवलंबन चाहिए yes. without अवलंबन हम नहीं रह सकते अवेयरनेस इसके ऊपर है थ्रो थ्रो दैट स्टिक यू डोंट नीड एन अवलंबन रिलीजन इज एन अवलंबन मनी इज एन अवलंबन इन सिक्योरिटी फियर ऑल दीज थिंग्स फोर्स एस टू होल्ड ऑन टू समथिंग सम स्टिक वी आर नॉट ब्लाइंड एक्चुअली we are blind in our eyes but we cannot be blind in our awareness that's why blind people are deeply aware my father has been a blind man for long i think uh, 30 years or so he was a blind man i found i saw how he changed how his awareness level was changed from time to time and he used to he used to listen his other sensations became very very sharp <laughs> so awareness is beyond abalam mm. uh, even the sir even the um, mind's basic job of finding meaning out of everything that is given to it mm. can be an abalamban like when we are reading 
I am aware that in every paragraph, my mind relates it to something I have read previously or I've heard previously, and uh, it it tries to find a meaning to justify it or to oh. challenge it. So this is the job our CEO mind is doing, a mighty CEO. It's on. It's in the in its office, very efficient. Or a CEO twenty four seven doing its work of finding meanings. And we don't know, but we uh, are most of the time our energies are trapped in this avalamban, as mm. you rightly put the word avalamban. Anyone else would like to reflect, or we go forward? मनके बारे में सर इसने एक नानक ने भी कहा नान शायद पंजाबी में है कि मन तू ज्योति स्वरूप है अपना मूल पहचान कहते ओ माइंड यू आर एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ प्योर लाइट हां रिकॉग्नाइज योर ओरिजिनल नेचर दैट इज जर्नी ऑफ लाइफ पर छोटी सी बात पंजाबी में कही मन तू ज्योति स्वरूप है अपना मूल पहचान कहते जिंदगी निकल जाती है इसको वो तक खुद ही तो लाइट है सर ने बड़ी अच्छी बात कही कि वी स्टार्ट रिलेटिंग द थिंग्स तो जब ये बात कर रहे थे तो व्हेन वी आर सेइंग दैट गॉड आत्मा और परमात्मा सर आपने एक बात कही थी क्या है ना तो ये आई थिंक दिस मैन हैज नेवर रेड जिसने किताब लिखी है मस्ट नॉट हैव रेड हिंदी फिलोसफी हिंदू फिलोसफी ऐसा लगता है कि करीब करीब सब जगह एक जैसी ही बातें हैं सर आपने एक टर्म सुनी होगी अद्वैत सुनी आपने exactly that's what come to my mind also ha uh, advait is a uh, philosophy given by shankaracharya he says ki atma and paramatma are to- not two different things wo atma paramatma ko brahm bolta hai baaki soul soul and god not two different things usko fir counter karta madhvacharya wo kehta dvait but these are two different things jo tumhe samne dikh raha hai wo alag hai jo nahi dikh raha bhagwan hai to ye ye wali controversy wahan bhi chalti hai आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा हर जगह ही वैसी चीजें दिखाई देती हैं सर थोड़ा दिन पहले सर ने मुझे याद है कि सूफियों के बारे में एक बात लिखी थी सर अच्छे सर जी तो सूफियों के बारे में थोड़ा सा हमें याद आता है उसमें एक टर्म यूज करते हैं वहादत उल वजूद वहादत उल वजूद विच अगेन मीन्स के गॉड एंड द क्रिएशन दे आर द सेम थिंग यूनिटी ऑफ बींग वहादत उल वजूद पर फिर उसको भी काउंटर करता है आदमी आके वहादत उल शदूद कहता नहीं ये अलग है तो इतनी सिमिलैरिटीज मतलब आप देखिए एक सूफी की बात कर रहे हैं हिंदुइज्म की बात कर रहे हैं क्रिस्टनिटी की बात कर रहे हैं इसका मतलब बेसिक चीजें वही हैं हाँ वो हमारा मन जब पढ़ रहे हैं तो ढूंढने लग जाता है बस इतना ही कह सकता हूँ मैं बेसिक की तरफ ही हम जा रहे हैं वो वही उद्देश्य है जी बेसिक में। और बाकी सब तो एनालिसिस है अभी मैंने इधर लिखा है वेस्टर्न में इंटरप्रिटेशंस और कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ट्रूथ इज सिंपल और हम लाइफ को कॉम्प्लिकेट कर देते हैं हम सिंपलीफाई नहीं करते हैं और भी करो और भी करो और भी करो और भी करो ज्यादा ज्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेट करते जाते हैं इसीलिए मैंने एक एक करके सारे अवलंबन छोड़ दिया मैं मंदिर जाना छोड़ दिया किताब पढ़ना छोड़ दिया मेडिटेशन में बैठना छोड़ दिया और डॉक्टर साहब से मैं भागता हूँ मैं दवाई लेना छोड़ दिया सिर्फ एक दवाई लेता हूँ मैं प्रोस्टेट का सब दवाई छोड़ दिया अब अलंबन छोड़ दिया मैं हंसते 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 फिर भी हर रोज देखता हूँ साला कितना अवलंबन पकड़ के रखा हूं मैं <laughs> जाता ही नहीं है मरते दम तक <laughs> एक छोड़ो तो दूसरे पकड़ो <laughs> एक हट छोड़ो तो ज्वेल को पकड़ो <laughs> अवलंबन से बरी हो जाए आपकी लाइफ चेंज हो जाएगी दिशा मिल जाएगा पैसे वैसे का कोई चक्कर नहीं रहेगा अपनी आराम से लाइफ फ्लो करेगी उधर जाना चाहता हूं मैं उधर आप लोगों के साथ उस प्लेटफॉर्म में जाना चाहता हूं जिस प्लॉट में प्लेटफॉर्म में संत कबीर रहते थे ये सब बुले शाह ये सब लोग रहते थे कितने आनंद में होते थे और हम सब अवलंबन को पकड़ के एक से एक बढ़ाते जा रहे हैं चलिए किट्टू पढ़िए कबीर की आपने बात कही सर हाँ जी 
कबीर को अवलंबन तो उन्होंने शब्द ने यूज किया वो कहते थे कि सबसे बड़ी जो आपके होती है ना अटैचमेंट वो घर से होती है तो आप हर चीज कहते हैं मैं घर चलता हूँ मैं घर आ रहा हूँ मैं शाम को घर चलूंगा या घर के लिए करूंगा तो वो एक लाइन बोलते हैं कबीरा खड़ा बाजार में लिए लुगाठी हाथ जो घर बारे अपना चले हमारे साथ कहता कबीरा बाजार में खड़ा कहता मेरे साथ वो चले जिसमें अपने घर जलाने की हिम्मत हो अपनी यानी सारे ये ये लिख करके दो जो घर बारे अपना चले हमारे साथ तो आप तो एक ट्रेवलिंग वो हो ये लिख करके देना हाँ यही बात मैं अपने ट्रस्टीज को कहते कहता रहता हूँ <laughs> ये कहता रहता हूँ शांति निकेतन चल मैं कहा ले जा रहा हूँ सब छोड़ करके चल सबको लेकर के आ <laughs> जो घर बारे अपना चले हमारे साथ ठीक है लिख दूंगा जी हाँ जी जरूर किट्टू पढ़िए अशित टू कंटिन्यू रीडिंग No, well, let us complete. Let us read only. I will not listen to this. Uh, let us. What a chat is going. Okay. Let's go. Chali. Okay. Too. You may have observed that in swimming, the more vigorously a person uses his body, the more quickly will he become exhausted. Whereas the one who is completely relaxed in the water, resting on its surface, using his arms and feet to glide through the water. rather than for the purpose of sustaining his body on top of the water is able to remain afloat for a long long time the water holds the body up the arms and legs merely propelling the body through the water and the more relaxed a swimmer is the longer will his body stay afloat yeah madam so the healing work is a beautiful work when it becomes as natural as floating on water or breathing otherwise healing work can be harder much harder than day labor the spiritual healer anchored in spiritual wisdom remains relaxed in god and lets the spirit flow he lets the truth flow and then the truth sets him or his patient free the truth will do that he never can that is the true essence of humility a relaxing in the spirit I can of mine own self do nothing, even though I try. Just let me be re- relaxed and let the truth carry the work. When you are swimming, let the water carry your body, and when you are giving a treatment, let the spirit, let the truth carry the treatment. Do not try to manipulate truth with your mind. Truth is infinite, but the mo- mind is finite. Do not try to manipulate infinite truth. to fit into the pattern of the finite mind the mind is an instrument given to you for your use just the same as is your body we are not of those who deny the existence of a body or would throw the body out of the window nor are we of those who would blank sorry nor are we of those who would blank out or shut off the mind the body is given to you so that you can move around in your present sphere of life the body with its organs and functions one integrated whole is an instrument for your use it is god's instrument instrument to show forth his glory rightly speaking the proper use of the body is to let god use the body to let god govern and control the body that leads to that relaxed relaxed state in which the government is on his shoulders that leads to that relaxed state in which the government in government is on his shoulders there is no way to aid digestion assimilation or elimination by taking thought the mind was not given to you for that purpose the mind is a vehicle through which you become aware of truth and that truth will govern every organ and function of the body truth will strengthen your muscles truth will give you the capacity to know anything that you have need of knowing every word of spiritual truth assimilated in your consciousness becomes a part of your mind and of your body you do not control your body you do not control your mind but the activity of truth in your consciousness an activity which of course uses your mind keeps your mind clear active clean harmonious and vital and not and your mind in its turn 
manages, controls, and governs the body. The activity of truth in your consciousness acts as a catalyst, act as acts as a catalytic agent, purifying both mind and body. There is a spiritual center in you, and in that center is stored up your entire spiritual heritage, immortality, eternal eternality, life, love, home, and infinite abundance. The center is not within your body. And it is useless to look for it there. It is your consciousness. And that consciousness is not in your body. Your body is in your consciousness, which is infinite. That is why, after you have studied and practiced, you will be able to close your eyes, be at peace, and find yourself in the body, out of the body, or wherever you would like to be. You will be able to draw out of the infinity of your own consciousness, all that is necessary for your unfoldment from this day unto the end of the world and beyond it unto infinity. Many people in metaphysics feel that the healing of physics ills through spiritual means is difficult because they do not understand the nature of the body. Repeat this the misunderstanding... Message. Many people in metaphysics feel that healing of physical ills through spiritual means is difficult because they do not understand the nature of the body. This misunderstanding stems from an incorrect concept of the word matter. In fact, ever since the days of first teaching of metaphysics, its followers have been confused by this term. The majority of those using the term matter, usually in a quite glib fashion, have no understanding whatsoever of the true meaning of it. They have been taught that matter is unreal and that it is an illusion. They have been taught that matter has no life and inasmuch as matter constitutes the body. They have denied the reality and existence of the body in an attempt to overcome or get rid of it. How can matter be unreal when it cannot be destroyed? Science has revealed the matter is an indestructible substance. Matter can change form, but it cannot be destroyed. It can be reduced to molecules and then to atoms. And when it has been resolved into atoms, what is left? Energy. Matter has not been destroyed by reducing it to its sense. Matter has only changed form. There is no way to destroy matter because matter is indestructible. Actually, the substance of matter is mind. Matter is mind appearing. Mind made visible as matter. Water, for example, can change to steam or to ice. But in the process of change, it has not been destroyed. In fact, it weighs just as much as one in one form as in another. A glass tumbler can be reduced to splinters. It can be dissolved from human sight, but its component parts cannot be destroyed. In the laboratory, the technician can prove that it has existence and that that existence has weight. If matter is indestructible, how then, you may ask, did this belief that matter is an illusion come about? The earliest recorded revelation as to the illusory nature of what of that which we see here, taste, touch, and smell is attributed to Gautam, the Buddha. On the basis of his revelation, he and his disciples did miracle healing work. His later students, however, misunderstood the word Maya or illusion, and they interpreted illusion as something external to their being. When metaphysics was first given to the world in the last century, it was taught that our senses testify erroneously. Unfortunately, Instead of holding to that, metaphysicians began to teach that everything existing in the external world is an illusion, including the body. But this world is not an illusion. It is the concept we entertain of it that is the illusion. Spiritual healing is based on the premise that sin, disease, and death have no externalized reality. They exist only as illusory beliefs or concepts. But matter is not unreal. 
the body is not unreal. The world is not unreal. This world is beautiful, immortal and eternal. This world will never be dissolved. But our concepts of it will change. Just as our concepts of body change. Every adult will have to admit that he outgrew his concept of an infant body and put on a child's body. He outgrew that and took the body of a youth. And later he discarded his youthful body when he grew to the stature of maturity. Furthermore, as he progresses on the spiritual path, he will entertain a more spiritual sense of body. But never will he have a more spiritual body than he has now. One, one, more, one moment. Now, what about concepts? Concepts, 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 concepts. All the time we talk about concepts. Is there any concept? Oh, that's a myth. That's an opinion. That's only apparent. Not the real. Conceptuality. Concepts. What is the use of it? Does it have a use in the context of your whole life? Eternal life? Yes or no? Does it have any reference to the work that we do, the projects that we carry out, I feel concepts are required only to that limits when we carry out some projects. We have a goal. We have to deliver. It's a part of the small work. But there is no concept of life. There is no jivan darshan, so-called. That makes it fragmented, segmented. That's contrary to the one power concept that we are exploring here. Continue, Kitu. Probably more fun is poked at metaphysics and mysticism because of their use of words real, unreal, reality, and unreality than for any other reason. Metaphysicians are often ridiculed because some of them use expressions as it is unreal or it is untrue. Two cars collide head-on and scatter themselves and those in them all over the scenery and the metaphysician comes along and says, oh, it's unreal, it isn't true, it never happened. Can you blame the world for ridiculing such statements? The world does not understand the metaphysical meaning of the words untrue or unreal. And the sad part is that very often the metaphysician using these same words does not understand the meaning of them either. Sandeepan, your daito, advaita, all these dogmas. Go ahead. In the work of the infinite way, the words real or reality pertain only to that which is spiritual, eternal, immortal and infinite. Only that which is of God is understood to be real or is recognized as reality. With his definition of reality in mind, it should be easy to grasp the statements that we cannot see, hear, taste, touch or smell reality. The words unreal and unreality pertain to anything, whether to our sense, harmonious or inharmonious, that is not permanent. It is at this point that the metaphysician usually makes his mistake. As a rule, when he sees a healthy person or what he calls a good or moral person or a normal, healthy, harmonious situation, he is likely to think of that person or situation as real. But when he sees the sick or sinning, he calls it unreal. Such an interpretation is invalid in the light of philosophic meaning of these words. Reality pertains only to that which is spiritual, is of spirit, soul, God, and therefore must be spiritually understood. It requires the faculty of the soul to behold reality. Reality pertains only to, only to that which is discerned through an inner awareness. Jesus referred to this as, Having eyes, see ye not, and having ears, hear ye not. In other words, there is that which must be seen and heard with the soul faculties. When we speak of sin and disease as unreal, 
we do not mean that they are non-existent. We are not just fooling ourselves and using our imagination and saying that they are unreal or untrue. But if a person has had ingrained in him from infancy that the material is the real and the material body the whole, then to him the disease is existent. When sin, disease and death are called unreal, it is not a denial of the so-called existence of these things. It is, a it is a denial of their existence as a part of God or reality. Do you see the difference between these two statements? In the realm of the real, the kingdom of God, the discords of sense have no existence. That, however, does not change the fact that we suffer from them. The unreality of it does not lessen our pain or remove our lack or limitation because to our sense of things, we are suffering from them. The beginning of wisdom is the realization that these conditions need not exist. Freedom from them comes not from seeking relief from God, but through seeking God and rising to that dimension of life in which only God is. There is not freedom from discord. There is not freedom from sin, false appetites or desires. There is not freedom from poverty. There is only freedom, freedom in God, freedom in spirit. Stop here. Now it is uh, eight thirty-five. We have ten minutes. How much? How much is left, Kapil, in the book? About five more, five more pages of the book, Ashok. Uh, we have a choice, uh, ladies and gentlemen. There is a newcomer. I wanted to hear her, and maybe some more people, so we can continue reading from here next time and have this 10 minutes for our reflection. Alternatively, we have no reflection and complete the book. What's your choice? I think we will reflect, Ashit, right. and listen let's not, to let's not rush to. Yeah, let's not rush through the book. Yeah, so mark it. We will start from here. We'll start from the beginning of business. Yeah. Yeah. Great reading, Kapil and Kittu. Thank you. कहाँ ले जा रहे हैं? हमें कहाँ ले जा रहे हैं? कैसे रिलेट करेंगे हमारे प्रेजेंट जो काम है जहां हम इन्वॉल्व हैं उसके साथ ये गति को ये डायरेक्शन को डिटरमिनेशन और डायरेक्शन ये टाइटल था मेरा ब्लॉग का एक लिखा था छोटा सा डिटरमिनेशन और डायरेक्शन Determination by the mind or direction from the top? From the soul. From the soul. And soul and the top is same. Jahan bhi jare ho as a god. Ye healing ka phenomena na hai inka. You are not the healer. You actualize and carry yourself in the soul of the other person and he, that person is healed. That is the concept here. You understand? I'm not healer. I'm not touching you and doing healing. That one is the healer. I actualize with the healer and I actualize me. I carry over to the other person and actualize that person. That person is healed. That is the concept. He's talking. Ashit, uh, healed of what? Hmm. What do you approach the healer for? Body discomfort? discomfort. When you're going beyond that? If you ask me personally, 
the doctor is here, he will be able to say more. If you ask me personally, healing means not body, not mind, discomfort of any form. If you are struggling, you need healing. If you are confused, a dilemma, sleepless nights, you are being healed. You need a healing. Neeraj is injured in the ankle, he needs a healing. I have indige indigestion problem, I need a healing. Shaitali is under depression, she needs a healing. Any discomfort to me is an aspect of healing. That's my answer to your question. Discomfort or disease is the same. You are using it as synonyms. Disease is a word interpreted as being clamped or tractioned or sick or something. But this is means discomfort. Both are synonymous that way. So one is the concept that we are reading in this book. It's not a concept. No, okay, sorry, not concept, but one is the fact that we that we are reading from this book that go beyond all uh, body discomforts. That you are not that anyway. You are a God identity. Hmm. At the God identity level, where does the concept of healing come in? I am confused. मैं तो beyond that हो गया फिर तो मैं फिर किसी healer के पास क्यों जाऊँ क्योंकि आप God में या या किसी को heal क्यों करूँ ये तो बात है कि दिमाग में मैं God हूँ सोचना और वैसे ही God हो जाना इसमें ज़मीन आसमान की फ़र्क है ninety nine percent लोग तो ऐसे नहीं है उनको हीलिंग चाहिए उनको डॉक्टर चाहिए उनको इलाज चाहिए इधर हीलर की बात हो रही है हम क्यों जाऊं हमें तो जाना ही है हम तो पागल हैं हम तो डिसिल्यूशन है डिल्यूडेड है हमें कहा गॉड रियलाइजेशन 99 परसेंट लोग को गॉड रियलाइजेशन नहीं है बीमार है आप बनो ना आप अवेकेंट हो जाओ उनकी हेल्प करो करना ही होगा आपको सबको लेके जाना है तो ये ये बुक मुझे हीलर बना रही है या मुझे हील कर रही है आपको कुछ नहीं बना रहा है आपको स्पिरिचुअली अवेकेंट कर रहा है वो सब को चेंज कर दीजिए मैं ये हीलर हीलर के लिए किताब नहीं चूज किया हमारी जर्नी स्पिरिचुअल एनलाइटनमेंट के तरफ है तो ये किताब उसका जरिया है हमारे लिए तो Perfect. Incidentally, as a byproduct, you will also heal. I am healing so many people now. I am now. I am. I am. I am means that uh, with my awareness, uh, I am creating an awareness. And कोई भी मेरे mind में आता है जैसे नीरज का आया मैं healing किया मैं मतलब with my awareness से healing किया सब का करता हूँ. My friend Suchitra has a problem. I heal her. I healer means I become aware. I connect. That's all. So in the process, you will be a healer. This book is a spiritual guide book. तो हीलिंग आप बात करते हैं तो हीलिंग का मतलब ये सर ने कहा कि सम डिस्कम्फर्ट तो तो डिस्क वेन एवर समबडी इज इन डिस्कम्फर्ट ही इमीडिएटली वांट सम टू टू बी रिलीव्ड ऑफ दिस डिस्कम्फर्ट इजंट इट अ वेरी लॉन्ग प्रोसेस व्हाट वी आर स्टडीइंग मुझे दांत में दर्द है 
मैं उसको डिस्कम्फर्ट कहता हूँ आपको कोई मन में डायलैमा चल रहा है बहुत डायलैमा ये करूँ ये करूँ मुझे डिस्कम्फर्ट है तो ये प्रोसेस बहुत लंबा नहीं मुझे बहुत बहुत ज्यादा टाइम लगे है समझने के लिए इमीडिएट के लिए होता है आपने देखा होगा कि जो हम हीलिंग करते हैं ना हमारे आम लाइफ में हम हीलिंग के साथ डीलिंग करने लग जाते हैं गॉड को कहते हैं गॉड मेरा दांत ठीक कर दे मैं <laughs> मंदिर में आके इतना कहूंगा हीलिंग और डीलिंग साथ साथ चल रही होती है डीलिंग हो रही होती है हमारी उनके साथ गॉड के साथ ये मंदिर में पंखे लगवा दूंगा मेरा ये काम कर दिया <laughs> क्या हम संदीपन क्या ये लंबा और छोटा को हम एक बार परे कर सकते हैं हटा सकते हैं साइड में और देख सकते हैं वो बंदा कितना दूरी में खड़ा है अपनी रियलाइजेशन से अपनी एक्चुअलाइजेशन से वो ही दूरी है जो जितनी जल्दी अवेकेंड हो जाएगा उसकी हीलिंग उतनी जल्दी हो जाएगा जल्दी जल्दी हो जाएगा। और देखिए जो डैमेज हो गया है अभी मेरी नी डैमेज है मैं लंगड़ाता हूँ वो अभी हीलिंग नहीं होगा तो क्या है जो मैं खत्म कर चुका हूँ नाइनटी सेवेंटी टू ईयर्स तक मैं इसको खत्म कर चुका हूँ मेरी बेवकूफी से अब वो रियालिटी बन गया मेरा ठीक है उसको एक्सेप्ट करना है जी बात दरअसल ये है कि मैंने नी जॉइंट्स को चेंज नहीं करवाया शिफ्ट नहीं करवाया मेरा काम चल रहा है फर्स्ट क्लास ठीक है <laughs> अभी मैं वो वॉकिंग में सेकंड हो गया वो पता है <laughs> अच्छा <laughs> संजीव को तो कोई बीटी नहीं कर सकता <laughs> कपिल मेरा बीस सेकंड में हो गया मेरा दोनों पैर लंगड़ा है ओके क्या सिचुएशन था मुझे बंदा देना पड़ा उसको पकड़ के जाता था कहा है इसको कहा एविडेंस आपको दू मैं एविडेंस आपको लेकर के गया था ना 2017 अच्छा जी डॉक्टर वांटेड टू ऑपरेट ऑन योर नीज़ द नेक्स्ट वीक मैं पहाड़ चढ़ा जी संदीपन इस पैर को लेकर के जो मैं चल नहीं सकता था ओके okay. और किसको बताऊं hmm. मैं जीता जागता खुद उदाहरण हूं ना अभी भी चल रहा है मेरा काम अब चैताली को पूछिए कपिल को पूछिए मैं जगदीश के कंधे पकड़ के चलता था इधर से उधर तक इतना बुरा हालत था वो ही मैं हूं विदाउट hmm. इलाज अभी भी चल रहा है कल मैंने उस वॉकिंग कमेंट में लिखा है जब मैंने सेकंड पोजीशन दे दिया गया मैं हंस रहा था कि मैं भी कंपटीशन में आ गया हूं वापस तो मैं उधर लिखा आई डोंट वर्क समवन वर्क्स विद मी आप भी करिए इन एवरी वॉक कनेक्ट अवेयरनेस के साथ देखिए आपके काम में क्या निखार आता है किस तरह से आपके लाइफ बदलता है मैं कोई मास्टर नहीं हूं मैं आपको अपना लाइफ शेयर कर रहा हूं जो भी काम आप कर रहे हैं जो भी प्रोजेक्ट में आप लगे हैं अवेयरनेस के साथ करिए बस मैं इतना कहूंगा हमारा वेन डायर के बहुत बड़ा है वेन एवर यू गो आप बच्चे को कहते हैं एग्जामिनेशन में मेरा एक कोर्स है बच्चों के लिए फियर दूर करने का एग्जामिनेशन से पहले उसका नाम है अग्नि परीक्षा उसमें मैं बच्चों को समझाता हूं जब भी तुम एग्जाम लिखने बैठते हो जब लिखोगे सोचना और 90 परसेंट तुम्हारे साथ लिख रहा है देखो क्या लिख निकलेगा तुम 10 परसेंट लिख रहे हो कनेक्ट कि तुम 90 परसेंट बड़ा हो इतना बड़ा हो यू हैव दैट इनविजिबल नाइन टाइम्स बिग पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ योर जो तुम्हारे साथ लगा हुआ है और तुम हंड्रेड बन करके लिख रहे हो जब गाड़ी चलाते हो तुम और नाइन टाइम बड़े हो जाओ बी अवेयर एंड ड्राइव देखो क्या निखार होता है मजा आ जाएगा गाड़ी चलाने इसीलिए मैं कभी ये नहीं लगाता हूं जब मैं चलता हूं सारे लोग ये लगा करके चलते हैं ये लगा करके जिम में लगे रहते हैं उसमें कोई काम नहीं होता दे आर नॉट अवेयर टाइमर नहीं लगाता हूं एक टाइमर लगाता हूं मुझे बीस मिनट करना है मैं पांच मिनट पांच मिनट करके नहीं लगाता मैं पूरा 20 मिनट का लगाता हूं और भूल जाता हूं मैं गिनता नहीं हूं पहले गिनता था और मेरा होता नहीं था मैं चलता हूं बस थॉटलेस अवेयर जो भी काम करिए 
पूरा अवेयरनेस के साथ करिए और देखिए कोई साधु बाबा बनने की जरूरत नहीं है यू विल बी स्पिरिचुअल दाढ़ी बढ़ाने की जरूरत नहीं होगी माथा ठेकने की जरूरत नहीं होगी मैं कहता हूं ठोक करके कहता हूं मस्ती से जिंदगी चलेगी मस्ती की सर आपने बात की मेरी थोड़ा सा एक और मैं कहानी मैं कहानी ज्यादा सुनाता हूँ मैं <laughs> तो जब तुलसीदास रामचरित मानस लिख रहे थे वो अपनी धुन में लिखे जा रहे थे सुबह से लेकर शाम तक लिखे जा रहे थे वो भूल जाते थे घर में खाने को कुछ नहीं है शाम को जब होता था तो लगता घर में चावल तो नहीं है बड़े परेशानी की इधर उसे मांगते थे अब तुलसीदास के दोस्त थे रहीम नाम सुना होगा रहीम का आपने बहुत बड़े कवि है कंटेम्प्रेरी और रहीम तो अकबर के नवरत्न थे और अकबर ने उनको एक बार आगरा का सूबेदार बना दिया गवर्नर सो so, उनके पास तो काफी धन दौलत थी जब उनको खबर मिली कि ये आदमी को घर में खाना भी नहीं होता है ये मेरा दोस्त है तो उसने एक पत्र भिजवाया कि भाई अगर तुम क्या काम करते रहते हो तुम यहाँ बाकी जो जो काम करते करते हो पर क्यों नहीं ऐसा करते मैं तुम्हें नौकरी दिलवा देता हूँ मनसबदार एक सबसे बड़ी नौकरी होती है मनसबदार तो कि तुम्हें मन्स... राजा को बोल के अकबर को मैं तुम्हें नौकरी दिलवा देता हूँ तो उनके एक, एक लाइन लिखी बड़ी मशहूर लाइन है कहते हम नौकर रघवीर के हम सचाकर हम चाकर रघवीर के पाटे लिखे हो दरबार तो हम तो नौकरी कर रहे हैं भगवान के घर में नौकरी कर रहे हैं लिखने पढ़ने की नौकरी दी उन्होंने हमें कहता हम नौकर रघवीर के पाटे लिखे हो दरबार अब तुलसी क्या होंगे नर के मनसबदार अब किसी इंसान की नौकरी कहाँ करेंगे अब हम क्या बात है संदीप कमाल हो गया बहुत बढ़िया आपकी टिप्पणी बहुत मजेदार होता है अर्षित का वॉकिंग एंड डायर से उनका एक मेजर कोटेशन मुझे याद है कोटेशन है या प्रेयर है एंड ही यूज टू से दिस बिफोर एवरी ऑफ हिस्स टॉक्स एंड ही if you just knew who walked with you if you just knew who walked with you on your path you have chosen you would yeah. never suffer from fear or doubt if you just knew who walked with you on your path you have chosen you would never suffer from fear or doubt so just you're not walking alone like i said yes. Wonderful, wonderful morning today. Thank you so much, everyone. आप सब आज मेरी अनुरोध है ये awareness week हो आपका जो भी छोटे मोटे काम सर आप कर रहे हैं मिनती कर रहा हूँ उस काम में ninety percent add करके करिए जोड़ लीजिए अपने आप को पूरा आप अधूरे हैं छोटा बन के कर रहे हैं इतना छोटा आप इतने छोटे नहीं हैं और विशाल है अनंत है उस अनंत को लाइए अपने पेन में अपने काम में और करिए और मुझे बताइए यह है नेचुरल इंटेलिजेंस एनआई हमारा एआई नहीं मैं अभी लिख रहा हूं आने वाले दुनिया के भीषण देख रहा हूं मैं कैसा दुनिया होगा एआई के चलते बहुत खतरनाक दिन आप हमारे सामने है मुझे लग रहा है दो साल के अंदर में इंसान को पहचान नहीं पाएंगे हम लिखित दे रहा हूं ये मेरी विशन है मैं छोटा आदमी हूं बहुत बड़ा आदमी नहीं हूं आप देखना दो साल बाद ये रास्ते में लोग चलेंगे ना उनको पहचान नहीं पाएंगे आप जिस तरह से हम नाटक दिखाते हैं ना 1930s में कैसा होता था पिक्चर सिनेमा और अब कैसा होता है देखते देखते हंसते हैं ऐसे एक्टर थे अजीब लगता है हमें इतना बदल गया है दुनिया दो साल में बंदे को अपने पोते के पोते को पहचान नहीं पाओगे आप पोते के बच्चे को उसके चेहरा बदल जाएगा इतनी क्लोनिंग हो जाएगा सो मैं लिख रहा हूं अभी भीषण क्या है आने वाले दुनिया में तो इसीलिए आपको कह रहा हूं बिकॉज आप हमारे प्रिय हैं आप बहुत जल्दी अवेयरनेस में आइए सब कुछ छोड़ दीजिए साफ छोड़ दीजिए पीछे अपने अवेयरनेस के साथ रहिए और देखिए कुछ अवलंबन मत रखिएगा और करिए देखिए 
Let us meet next week. Thank you very much for a lovely Sunday. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a great week ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Ashit. Thanks a lot. Apurva ko next time sunenge. Bye. Thank you.